So it's about um, seven odd years ago. And I decided Match.com was predictable. So I try another site called Plenty of Fish and it was free. So I get talking to various women on there. And then I saw a photo of a Filipina in London, lived in central London. Blondish. I thought that was kind of different. Her hair was like a golden blonde. Quite attractive. I read her profile. Seemed very nice. We got chatting on plenty of fish on the messenger and I even phoned her up. Her voice was, mm, I wouldn't say deep, but she kept going <coughs> <coughs> to get a higher pitched voice. I didn't think anything of it. You know, some people don't come across well on the phone or in public speaking if they're nervous. So anyway, we were chatting off and on for a week or so. We talked about the Philippines and what job she did here in London and how long she'd lived here. She worked in a hairdressing salon in a place called Earl's Court and she coloured people's hair, a hair colourer. So we made a date eventually to meet up in London. So I have a bad habit. One of my habits is, say I'm gonna meet someone, for example, two o'clock in the afternoon, I'll get there 12.30. Ah, I can feel a fly. Just one of my habits, I always get to places really early. So, you know, I'm hanging around, looking at the sites, going into the bookshops in central London. I'm thinking about the Filipina I'm going to be meeting in, in a few hours time and what might happen. You know, all the usual kind of stuff. So anyway, she texts me. We were supposed to meet. I think it was 6.30 in the evening. It was winter, so it was dark by 6.30. No problem. I'm in the bookshop. I'm warm. So she texts me, going to be 30 minutes late. Hope that's not an inconvenience. No, no, that's fine. Not an issue. So 30 minutes later, I get another text. I'm standing by such and such store. So I knew where the store was. It was literally five minutes away from where I was. So I walk there, really getting excited, you know, not bad looking. And I'd only seen her in the photo. When we chatted, it was on the phone and not on cam or anything. So I meet her and it's quite dark, you know, we're meeting in the street, she seems Nice, quite tall, but hey, slim. So I'm kind of looking closely and I, I'm kind of thinking something's amiss here and I can't quite figure it out. And like I said, we're in the street, it's quite dark. Even though it's central London, the part we were in did have lighting, but it wasn't too great. So anyway, we go to a coffee shop and we start chatting. And I'm kind of thinking, hmm, can't put my finger on what's wrong here. You know, very nice she is. We're chatting. I can't even remember what we were chatting about. Small talk, you know, when you meet someone for the first time in the flesh and you're just talking about anything, the weather, the way the day's gone. So we have a coffee and then we make arrangements to go to the Japanese restaurant 
about five minutes away. So we walk, we're chatting, and I suddenly thought, uh uh, I think I know what's bugging me here. Is that really a Filipina female? Or is that a Filipina transsexual? Still wasn't 100% sure, but kind of getting there. Anyway, we go to the Japanese. It was like a buffet. It wasn't a sit down restaurant. So I wanted katsu curry and she wanted some kind of fish. So I'm kind of sitting down at the table and she's standing up to where you pay for the meal because you had to pay in advance. And I'm looking at her backside and it's kind of flat. She's wearing trousers. And it's flat and I'm thinking, do you know what? That's not a female. So anyway, she brings the food. I eat the food, it was sushi she had, that was it. She's eating, we're chatting, and I'm kind of getting a bit lost for words by this time, because I realize what I realize. But, a nice person nonetheless. So I thought, how do I bring the subject up? Do I just come right out with it and say, excuse me, are you a transsexual? Because say I'm wrong. Say she's just very slim and tall. That's going to really be offensive. So I used a bit of psychology and I kind of rent, went round the houses, so to speak. And I brought up the subject of Gay people, what did she think of them? Lesbians, what did she think of them? And transsexuals, what did she think of them? And then she, he, she confessed. So I was fine because, you know, it was just a one off. I wasn't going to take it any further. I'd gone out thinking she was a Filipina. Naively, well, no, not naively, because the photo was pretty convincing. And to be honest with you, she did look like the photo. So in terms of the face, she just looked like a, a modern Filipina living in the West. Like I said, she had this kind of blonde hair, little longer than shoulder length, straight, small features, tall, like I said, almost as tall as me. So I was fooled to begin with, and I just looked at it as, oh well, gone out for a meal, and that's it, it's as far as it's going to go. And the big surprise I got at the end wasn't that she was... Um, transsexual, the big surprise was she paid for the mill. And then I realised something. As much as she's transsexual and wants to be female, I don't know that many females, Filipina or not, would have volunteered on a first date to pay for the mill. But a guy would now, I don't know if she felt guilty that she hadn't told me. And to make up for it, she paid. I have no clue. But as I said, she was a nice person. We chatted. We finished the meal. We said our goodbyes. And that was the end of it. Did I waste my time? Well, kind of, because I thought she was a Filipina female. And I was looking for a relationship. So on that basis, yes, 
she wasted my time. But in terms of life experience, meeting different kinds of people, it was fine. And like I said, she paid for the meal. Never heard from her again. Nice person. So, which leads me on to you get Westerners that come to the Philippines looking for ladyboys. I've never quite understood the appeal. Um, let me quantify what I mean. I understand if you're gay, you're looking for another guy. I understand if you're a lesbian, you're looking for another woman. But I've never kind of understood that if you're, I guess maybe they're bisexual. So they have the guy, but with the appearance of a woman. Now you have pre-op and you have post-op. Post-op is when they've had the operation and they have a vagina and breasts, etc. Pre-op is when they don't. Maybe they have some kind of, they're taking tablets for breasts. But still, I don't know. Not saying there's anything wrong with it. And there are some stunning lady boys. I've seen photos of the ones in Thailand. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. But the only thing that would not bother me is the fact even once they've had the, uh, the post-op, I know they take hormonal tablets, etc. But they're still deep down, I think, men, no matter what they've done. Let's say you have a fight, you have an argument with them. They're going to be pretty tough. You know, they're going to lash out at you, maybe. That's what I've always thought. But like I say, the person I went out with was really nice and I don't have a, a problem with lady boys, gay people or anything else. In fact, my hairdresser's gay, really nice guy. And all the workers, he, this is in the Philippines, and all the workers he has in there are either lesbians or transsexuals, and they are really lovely people. I wanted to do an interview with one of the transsexuals, but she got shy and didn't want to do it. So maybe lady boys is another topic for another time to discuss.